Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Especially during times of economic upheaval, the people find themselves overwhelmed often by concerns for their finances, by concerns for their economic futures. They find it very hard to really experience joy, to enjoy the blessings that they already have received from God. In a sense, these kinds of concerns are, are simply very natural to have. And so what, at, at times of economic difficulty, of, of uncertainty, of turmoil in society, when we see people acting tense and, and irritable, we can understand why they might be acting that way. Because those concerns that they're facing are very real and can cause very real reactions within us. And of course we know that even as Christians, we're not exempt from those same kinds of worries and pressures and tensions and stresses that, that everyone else in the world around us faces. The Apostle Paul in our reading today from Philippians chapter 4 comes to us in the midst of all these kinds of tensions and concerns and worries and stresses. He tells us to rejoice always. And when we're in the middle of a very tumultuous times, that may seem like, like too much for us to possibly be able to do. When the Apostle Paul tells us to lead a life of consistent joy, I was tempted to reply to the Apostle Paul to go and give that command to somebody else, or to come back to us at some other time when we're not faced with so many challenges and with so many worries. After all, how can we possibly rejoice all the time when we're surrounded by such insecurity and such upheaval? Whether we're talking about the economic fortunes of our own country or, or of our state or of our community, or just perhaps looking at our own individual economic troubles, it can be very hard to be joyful always in the midst of those kinds of troubles. Well, the sad fact is that we often feel that we can only really rejoice when things are, are going our way for us in our lives. And it's not usually very often that we feel that everything in our life is going our way. When our income doesn't expand fast enough to, to keep up with the cost of living with inflation around us, when we face personal, individual, financial hardship, it's very, very hard often to be joyful always in the midst of those circumstances. The sad fact is that we often feel we can only rejoice when, when, when God is, is blessing us in exactly the way we want hard for us to be consistently joyful. We need to be honest with ourselves. If, if we can't be joyful all the time, we evidently have not yet learned that secret that the Apostle Paul is talking about in our reading. The secret of being content in any and every situation. Now, Paul isn't making a, a command here that he considers to be unattainable. He's also not giving us advice in something that he himself doesn't know anything about. Paul knows how we can have consistent joy in our lives because he, he knows that he himself had attained it. And he says that it's just as possible for us to have as it was for him to have that kind of consistent, ever-present joy. But first we need to realize our problem, what our problem is. And perhaps because in, in this year we have been living through so much uncertainty, fi financial uncertainty, uh, uh, health and medical uncertainty, we may have come to believe that in order to be truly joyful, to be consistently joyful, we need to depend on things and circumstances. If we have enough money in the bank, if, if we have enough insurance coverage, 
If we have enough, uh, enough things to keep us entertained, if we have the kind of car that we want or the, the kind of TV that we want or the kind of video games that we want, whatever else it might be that we're interested in, we feel that then if we have those things, if we have those circumstances around us in our lives, then we can be joyful. And if something comes along to threaten our possession of those things, we might find ourselves losing our joy. Well, Paul, Paul, the apostle, manages to escape from that kind of trap that so often robs us of joy. In our text, he tells us that he had learned, first of all, to be content. No matter what financial condition he had or, or no matter what other outward circumstances he faced in life, he reminds us, he tells us about his own life, that there were times in his life when he did, by God's grace and blessing, have an abundance of goods, and wealth, and food. But there were also times, he says, when, when he went without many of those necessities of life or, or the, the luxuries of life. When he suffered hunger and pain. But what he insists on is that Regardless of his own personal financial fortunes or circumstances, no matter what the, the outward circumstances he was in, he could still be joyful because he had learned to be content with his situation in life. What's, what's most important for us to understand is why Paul could be content in, in any and every situation that he found himself in. It wasn't because he had some kind of, of strong inner strength within himself, his, his own self-discipline, that he was just such a, a moral and upright person that, that we couldn't possibly hope to be as, as morally upright as he was. The reason that he could be content is that he knew that no matter what the trial or the need was that he faced in his life, that God was always near. Since he knew that, since he knew that God was always with him to bless him, to protect him, he knew that he didn't have to worry about any circumstance that might present itself in his life. He knew that he could go to God at any time and let God know what he needed. And trust that all the time God was with him and that God cared for him. Now, it's also not as if the Apostle Paul was a, a, a blind optimist or idealist who, who simply just ignored all the dangers and hardship of life and all the troubles that he had to face. Paul says, and, and it, it, as we read the, the rest of the New Testament, especially the book of Acts, we see that he did experience times when he was utterly crushed. Certainly we remember the times where he was beaten within an inch of his life, and that happened multiple times to him. He also talks about what he called a thorn in his flesh. He called it a messenger of Satan to torment him. And he talks about how he pleaded with the Lord to take that away from him, that thing that was, was so plaguing him, whatever it might have been. He begged with God to remove it. But God denied that request of, of Paul's that he had made again and again with, with pleading. God instead told Paul that he, that God, would give Paul the strength that he needed to bear up under that thing that was causing him so much inner turmoil. And Paul also expressed the trust that, that God would guard and keep what Paul had entrusted to God's care namely his faith in Jesus as his Savior, until that day when God would call Paul out of this earthly life to his side in heaven. And so for this reason, Paul assures us in the last verse of our reading that he could do all things with God's help. God supplied Paul with the strength to do what needed to be done, to, to face whatever challenges he was facing in his life. Now, as we said, Paul's life was certainly not a bed of roses. It, it wasn't just a, a walk in the park. He did experience great poverty, 
weakness and hunger, as well as also success, prosperity, and strength. Yet through it all, through the ups and the downs, he knew that God would be with him, always. He knew that, that God had marked him as his own child in baptism. He knew that God himself had died on the cross of Calvary for even the worst of sinners, as he admitted that he himself was. He knew that God, the Holy Spirit, has, had made his own body his temple. Paul knew that with the gifts of Jesus, God would give him everything that he needed. And so what was there to threaten his consistent joy in his life? He knew that he was beyond the reach of anything that could try to take that joy away from him. He was beyond the reach of anything that could try to take him away from the love of God that was in Christ Jesus, his Lord and Savior. So it's from that rich and and happy experience that the Apostle Paul tells us that we also can be joyful. We have all of those same promises from God that the Apostle Paul had. We have the same God who has adopted us to be his own beloved children through baptism and through his call to faith through the gospel. We have the same God who loved each one of us so much that he willingly left his heavenly throne and left the the power and glory that was his as God and came to earth to live as our brother among sinful human beings, to be mistreated, to be rejected by his own people whom he came to save, finally to suffer and to die for us. So that we need fear no enemy. We don't need to fear death or the devil or any other enemy that may come against us. We have the same God who fills us, who who showers us with every good and perfect gift. Not because we deserve his gifts or have earned his gifts, rather because he loves us, because he delights to freely give us everything that is for our eternal good. Because the Apostle Paul knew these truths about God, he could truly be content no matter what the circumstances he faced in his life. Because Paul knew these truths about God, he was convinced that he could face any challenge, no matter what trouble or difficulty it was, by the strength that God provided for him. You and I have all of those same promises that that the Apostle Paul had from God. As we read through the Bible, we see the thousands, literally thousands of promises of grace and blessing that God has made to his people. All of those promises assure us that God cares about our every need. So all of us can live with the with the same confident joy that the Apostle Paul had in his life. We can, as the Apostle Paul exhorts us in in this reading in Philippians chapter 4, we truly can be joyful always, but only, only if we anchor our joy in those wonderful promises that God has made to us. We don't have to let worry steal any of that joy from us when we take our needs and our our concerns and our worries to the Lord in prayer, that Him to resolve them for us. The Apostle Paul assures us in our text that the Lord is near. He is with us. So with that assurance that, that God is always with us, He knows our needs and He promises to care for us and to bless us. With that assurance, We can experience God's peace that surpasses all understanding. It it goes so far beyond our ability to comprehend. It's amazing. It's miraculous. His peace is always with us. He promises that that peace that he gives to us, of knowing his love, of knowing his care, that peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Savior. So it truly is a wonderful 
life, a life of consistent joy, peaceful contentment when we live as Paul did, trusting in God's promises no matter what challenges or, or other circumstances we might face. By God's grace, through faith in Jesus and, and in all of God's promises, may that life of consistent joy, of contentment in what God has given us, of, of full and complete trust in his blessing, may that life be ours now 